Okay, hopefully now you guys can hear me. I do not know what's going on with YouTube and why it does that and why it decides to do it when it does it, but hopefully you can hear me now. Hi Donna, hi Ann. Testing. All I did was restart everything. I don't know why they decide to do that. It just does it. It, I don't know. I don't know if it's YouTube. I don't know if it's OBS. I don't know. But we got it fixed. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Let me repeat a couple of things that I said. And I apologize for the sound issue, technical issues, guys. I hate that that happens, but I don't know what causes it or I would fix it. We, I was saying that I did this shadow box. Let me go over to the camera and show you guys that. This is the shadow box that I did. And what I was saying is be careful when you choose your colors because I didn't have time to change it and fix it. Um, but when I chose my two colors after I started putting them on, I realized that my top two colors didn't have enough color difference. So when you're doing those, hi Bonnie, hi Elaine. And I did say hi to everybody, Louise, Ellen, Claudia, all of you guys, Catherine, Pat. I did say hi when we didn't have any sound. And you guys can call yourselves whatever you want. If you want to call them Aprilites, that's up to you guys. I just call you guys my favorite people, so. <laughs> but anyway, when you're doing these, make sure that you select your four. I'm doing, I put three colors in the file, but if you need a fourth, depending on size, make sure that you choose four that are close together, but far enough apart. I'm going to say skip a shade in between each one so that you get that good gradient on there. And we're, I'm going to show you guys with a different color tonight what I mean. And you can do these on canvas as well. We're going to do this on paper that goes into the shadow box. If I can find what I did with my paper. Here it is. I'm using, like I did with that one, the brushed foil uh, paper. This is the new paper from Cricut. Um, and you can do this on canvas. You can do it on your walls. Uh, you're just going to mark out your spot, your shape. That's all you're going to do. But this is the True Brushed Paper from Cricut. This is the Elegance Pack. And I'm using the Silver out of the Cool Water Pack. So, I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew what I had said prior, Elaine. Um, tonight... On this one, I'm going to use four colors of blue, and these all, all four of these blues came out of the tones packs that you get from Cricut, and you can see that they're, they all, these two are close, but there's still enough difference to tell. When I picked these four colors, I think I picked, I forgot to skip a page or something, because these two are really, really close. They're not the same, but they're almost the same. So don't make that mistake. With the brush silver, if you guys did not get any of this paper, I would get some. It, it's awesome. I did some tests. Uh, Louise and Sue and them know that I did some tests. It's a really soft paper. Um, you could use it for a boxes, but it would have to be the small, like, pieces of candy boxes. You, it, I don't think it's strong enough for a large box. But for panels and stuff like that, it's great. Embossing. And this one's black, but you guys can see it embosses beautifully. Doesn't cut through. doesn't break 
the skin of the paper. So it is great for embossing. And I did several embosses, different types, just to be sure. Some of them that were tight and close. And they all embossed really, really, really well without breaking the skin. I did several of them, several different patterns to see. And I even did one that had a really sharp, tiny edges, and that did not cut through either. And this was one of those stamping up. And it also did well with a diffuser in there, leaving my flat spot. It, it did well with that. No cracking. Here's one where I did the die cut, cut beautifully, and folded the edges on it. No cracking, none. None whatsoever. Gorgeous paper, guys. So if you did not get any, I would grab a couple of packs of that. It's, it's really, really, really pretty. And so far, I haven't found anything that you can't really do with it. So, and it's very soft. Uh, it's a little stiff for flowers, Ellen. I did not test it for that. Of course, guys, if you get some and you want to try it, take a piece of your scrap and see if you can um, if you can curl it, things like that. Take a piece of the scrap from where you cut out your squares and, and play with a piece of it. You don't have to cut up a sheet like I did. I'm not going to encourage you guys to waste a whole sheet. But with a new project or a product like that, when you're doing a project, you're going to have some scrap where this cuts out and just cut a piece of it and play around with it. Hey, Sue. But this file is set up for a nine by nine. Let me go over and show you guys that. And if your shadow box is not a nine by nine, I'm going to show you how to uh, size. You want to make sure everything is grouped. And I ungrouped it because I cut a file just before we came in. You're going to put in a square the size that you need. So if your, your shadow box is a 6x6, six six, you're going to put a 6. Change that square to a 6. And just leave it sitting on top. Then you're going to select the group of images and you're going to shrink it down and bring it in and you're just going to keep shrinking it down until you get the file down to the size of your square and then you'll know that this file is set up and ready to go to fit in your shadow box. It is that easy. So that's how you're going to size any of the size this to fit any of the shadow boxes. Yeah, it's really thick. I thought I had two, maybe three sheets of cardstock in that, Jamie. Um, but it's, it's really nice. And when you, when you select score on this, guys, if you're using this true brushed, it automatically goes to the stylus. It doesn't call for the uh, scoring wheel. I don't know why, but I just... I use my stylus for mine. And it scores beautifully. I'm fixing to show you guys that as well. So to do this shadow box, all you're going to do is cut your paper and I've set this for a heart you can do any shape you want and you can see my score line there in that brushed all that score line is going to do is show me where to line up my butterflies that's it I'm not going to use it for anything else I'm going to cover it when I put my butterflies on there and that's it now if you're doing it on a canvas this is an 8x8 canvas just take a scrap of paper, any kind of cardstock that you have, and cut your shape, your heart, whatever, out of that. And then place it in the center of your canvas with a glue dot, whatever you need to hold it there. And then just trace a very light pencil line around it. And then that's going to give you your template of where to glue your butterflies 
on a canvas. Same thing for a wall. You can cut a piece of removable vinyl and put it up on your wall if you're just gluing them straight to the wall or however you're going to attach them. Um, and then you can make your template that way too. So it's very easy, very versatile project. You use any shape. Uh, you can fill it with any shapes. We're just happening to be using the butterflies. But you can use any shapes that you want. You can use flowers if you want to do rolled flowers. And I have four different colors of butterflies. I am not going to cover this whole thing, guys, so that we can move on to the other project because that's the one everybody's really, really, really interested in. But I'm just going to show you what I did. And I just folded my butterflies so that their wings stuck up just a little bit. That's all. You can use a glue dot. You can use your tape runner. For me, it was easier just to use the art glitter glue, and they did stick. And I just started at the point of my butter of my heart, and I just stuck that butterfly there. And I kept running them around the edge, and I kept mine going in different directions. I did not put them in the same direction. You can put them as close together as you want, as far apart as you want. It's still going to look good no matter how you do it. Some of them I glued um, the wing completely down on one side and had it stick up on the other. Some I glued and just had the body stick up. But that's all you're going to do. And you're just going to place them until you feel your heart in like you want with that color. And I went all with one color and I kept going across in a straight line or semi straight line and then you're going to take once you run out of that color go to your second color and start that one so you can do it from light to dark or dark to light whatever your preference is doesn't matter is everybody following along with that but you're just going to put them down until they're till you fill that heart in. And I just stuck a fairy on here like she was, because I had it, to make it look like she was changing the color of the butterflies. But you can put anything you want on the front. You can do birth announcements. You can do uh, a name, a word. Would be gorgeous with the um, frosted glass vinyl on there. Be really, really pretty. So, Make sure that you just line them up. Once you've done that, all you're going to do is get your shadow box. Once you've filled it all in, you're going to put it face down inside. Add your back, close it all up, and then flip it over and you're done. That's all there is to that. Okay? And if you guys have any questions or you get stuck on that later, just let me know. I'm going to finish this later because it is a little tedious to glue all the butterflies down uh, one at a time, but that's the way you're going to get them on there. And just let them go in different directions. You can make them go in all one direction if you want. It's totally whatever look you are going for. So the next one is the project of the shadow boxes that light up with the scenes. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Um, let me just, a lot of people are buying these files. I'm just going to show you guys how to do your own. Um, Hopefully it won't show you guys all my account information, but we'll see. I think it was paper shadow box. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about right here. Let me pull over so you can see that. Oh, yeah. Guys, you can make your own you do not have to some of these are five dollars some of these are twelve dollars some of them are fifteen dollars there are just so many in here but there if you've ever made a box card it is the same basics 
the exact same basics um, and you just pick whatever you want to go in there. We are going to replicate this one right here. Okay. Hi, Nakomi. Um, that was the true brushed Nakomi, the true brushed Cricut paper. It's new. That's the one we were discussing. And it's on Cricut.com. It's called True Brushed. So we are going to kind of replicate this guy right here. Since it's Disney or whatever, I didn't get the actual Disney castle to show you guys and all that. Um, I just got some silhouettes. And I made an SVG in Surecuts a lot and put it up on craftingwithapril.co so that you guys could use it. I haven't actually made anything out of it yet, but that's what we're going to do now. So the first thing you want to do is go to craftingwithapril.co And you're going to go to the free SVG files and it's going to make me log in. If you're not registered, you'll have to register to get to these. And let me just close that and go to the free SVG tab. And when you go to the free SVG tab and scroll down, here's the file. This is for you to follow along with me tonight if you guys want it. This tutorial, if you click on it, it's going to take you to tonight's tutorial so that you can come back to it if you need to. But you're just going to click on that and open it up and download it and put it on your desktop. I'm going to cancel because I already have it. Wherever you save it to, you're just going to do that and then bring it into Design Space. So I am going to go to Upload and Upload and Browse. And I am going to go to my desktop and I know that that is there somewhere right here and I'm going to open it hey Aloria so here's the file that I created and it's just in there it's nothing special nothing's been done to it it's this is just to teach you guys how to make your own layers so I'm not going to keep it so I'm just going to save it and I'm going to select it and insert it. And here we go. So once you've got it in Design Space, now we can ungroup it and start working with it. And this is the main part right here, guys. This right here doesn't matter. You can replace that with anything. This is a... Let me arrange and move these to the back. These are the layers for an 11 by 14 shadow box. Okay? And this is, this is the guts of... Let me align those and group them. I'm going to hide this group for right now. I want to just just want to focus on this. So you've got your guts right here for and I set these up 11 by 14 and you can see that I set it up as coming in 11.5. I'm going to change that to 11. I want it to be actually 11 by 14. And I'm going to do that with all of them. So I'm just going to select them all. Unlock. And I'll tell you why. I set it up at 11 and a half because I thought about folding the sides to give you that depth. And then last night I had a moment and I was like, huh, there's an easier way to do that. And you can see that I've stair-stepped these and whatever your scene is, you are going to 
stair step your fill on these. So if you had a 9x9 nine nine shadow box and you wanted to use it rather than 11 by 14 your first step is going to be to get a shape and change that. So let's say it's a 9x9 nine nine, and then duplicate it. And whatever your frame edge is, how much edge you have, I made these a quarter inch, so I'm going to change this to an 8.5 so that it gives me a quarter inch all the way around. I'm going to select the two, align, center, and slice. Now I did this in Escal, so mine's going to look a little bit different. And then you can hang on to one square. This is going to be your main base for a 9x9 nine nine frame. I did the same thing with this 11 by 14 Just a frame. That's all we need. And the way you're going to stair step this is your insert. I'm just going to take this back to 9 inches. And I am going to change the height. In the front, you really don't want any height, so you want to duplicate. You always want to keep one frame with nothing. That's your front piece. That's where we're going to put the word love, like in this one, in that Mickey head. You can see there's not much of a frame. But if you look at the second layer behind it, it steps up to the top of the Mickey ears. And then the frame behind that is coming up to right at their shoulder area or chest area. And then the next one goes up a little bit higher. And then, the, of course, the next one goes up a little higher than that. So it's going to require a little bit of work on your part to get to that. So what you're going to do is have the one. And then you're going to unlock that. And let's say that you want it to go up an inch and a half. So we're going to change the height of that to an inch and a half. We're going to bring it in there. And we're going to align and center it horizontally. And we're going to weld it. Oops. And if you got that little line, you didn't have it down far enough. So let's just scoot it back down. Align, center horizontally, and weld. And now that's my second piece. My third piece, I'm just going to take this piece and duplicate it, and I'm just going to add another one in. And you won't know what those height requirements need to be until you have the pieces that you want to put in it and have them laid out. So you can start with one layer or two layers, and you can go from there and, and fill them in. And if you've got one and you filled it in like I have these back here and it's too much, you can just take and insert a square and slice it out. You just need to know that it's to get a quarter inch border, you have to have take a half inch off your slice piece because it's a quarter inch on each side. Is everybody following with me so far? But that is going to be the basics of your layers. And you can do as many layers as you want or as few layers as you want. And here's how we can get around the different depths. We don't need that now. Um, I just wanted to show you guys how I got to this, these steps here. This is an 11 by 14. Let me come over to the thing. Here is an 11 by 14 frame. And I apologize, I bumped the camera. Let me straighten you guys back out. On this 11 by 14 frame, we need to know how deep we are. That's going to tell you how many layers you can put in, because you can do two layers, three layers, four layers, five layers, if you want to get into the competition type that people have been posting um, and do 20 or 30 layers. You're just going to need the depth to do that. I like the shadow boxes, the Belmont frames from Michaels. 
and I'm just going to show you guys this one, but I'm going to set it to the side because it's hard to show you on camera. But these scenes really work better either vertically or horizontally where you've got some height. Uh, the 9 by 9s can get a little tight, but you can do it. It's just a little trickier, um, but you can do it. And the reason that I like the Belmonts from Michaels is because of this reason right here. And not all shadow boxes will do that. And I'm going to show you. I'm back, I hope. Don't ask me what's going on, guys. I have no idea. Woo. Okay, where did I leave off? Where did you guys lose me? Okay. With the Belmonts, you can take this frame out and all you're going to do is paint or cover that with cardstock and or put in this frame and make make your measure that to fit your cardstock because the measurement that we're using and the measurement on your if it's a nine by nine is to sit up on top of this. So in order for all your nine by nines, you would have to take this out. Okay, you're going to have to run you a little dot of glue up here to hold your glass in place and then you're going to have to put another little glue dot up there to hold your backing in place if you don't use this insert. But you can most certainly use this insert and just make your pieces fit a quarter inch smaller which is actually a half inch. So you would have to make them eight and a half by eight and a half to start. So. But that's why I like these. You can take that piece out and, and do this as differently as you want to do it. All the others, they don't all do that. Um, this is one of them. This is one of, this is a really like a $15 box, but it's glued in. Can't get it out. So you need to be aware of what shadow box you're working with before you start laying out your frame, okay? It, it may be Facebook, Ellen. Um, I don't know why it's doing that. But again, this is a nine by nine and the other is 11 by 14, but they are counting the entire top here, not inside that. And just to be sure, I'm going to measure this. Yep, it's a nine. The backing itself is nine by nine. So this will have to come out unless I change my size. So that being said, let's go back over to Design Space. So my frame is an 11 by 14. Okay, and I am going to want my paper to be 1114, but actually it needs to be to go on top of inside of the frame without taking that frame piece out. It would have to be 10 and a half by 13 and a half. So that's where we would start there. And I'm just going to delete these. I don't need them. They were just examples. I just wanted you guys to have them to follow along. But this would be where I start with my frame. 10 and a half by 13 and a half for a 11 by 14 with the removable guts. I'm, but I'm leaving my guts in and I'm going to go inside that so that I don't have to adjust my backing and all that kind of stuff and, and fix it. So, but we need to give them that depth like we have here. 
Uh, some people are going like five millimeters or, you know, quarter inch, stuff like that. It's going to depend on what you want, eighth inch, however thickness you want your layers apart to be. You just need to be mindful how many layers you're putting in there and what will fit in your shadow box. So you need to measure the inside depth as well. This is what I came up with to get around that for all shadow boxes so that your file would you could work with it with several different boxes okay so what we're going to do here let's go back to our design space and I am going to get a shape I'm going to get a square and I'm going to get a hexagon well I said I was going to get both it doesn't want to give me both there we are and I am just going to Minimize that down a little bit, bring it in, and I'm going to take those two and I'm going to slice it, and I just want that piece there. I'm going to get rid of that. So this is what I want, and I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees. Let's just make it so we can see it here. And I'm going to make it, I don't know, 0.5 deep and I am going to duplicate it I'm just going to bring it down to the bottom and then I'm going to bring this one up to the top that's pretty close I'm going to select the two And I am going to align left, make sure they're the same, and I'm going to weld it. And then I'm going to duplicate it. Align top and weld. Some of you may be guessing what I'm doing here, and some of you may be lost, but I'm going to explain it. I'm going to flip this one horizontal. going to align top and weld now that is my main piece for this whole box everything on this will stem from this one piece be welding in our pieces down at the bottom like I showed you earlier and building it up I want to go one step further I'm going to get a score line and I'm going to bring it in right on that edge of my frame. I, don't, I forgot to look and see how long those were. Easy way to make sure that it is the right length is to turn it to draw or cut and then change it back so you can see it. I'm just going to line that up there. Change it back to score and I'm going to duplicate it. I don't care if it's a little bit longer on these others. That doesn't bother me. Just going to line those up. Yes, it's going to be a trash piece anyway. Then I'm just going to put them right there. Move that out of the way. I'm going to select them and I'm going to attach. And I've got four scores here, and you can see, you can um, actually let me detach, align, well, it didn't detach it, there we go. I want to align top, align, distribute horizontally, and then attach. And then I'm just going to place one and duplicate it. Place the next one, duplicate it, and I'm just bringing these down and I am lining it up, This my bound box, I'm just lining it up on the edge there so that they are all in the same position. Then I'm just going to select all and attach. Now the reason I did that, and that one still looks though, that for some reason it does that when it gets on a 
heavy score. But now I have all these score lines. So what this is going to do, depending on how many layers that I do, I will know how much to trim off and make sure that I trim it in the exact same spot on all four tabs. So that when I layer these up in that shadow box, not only does it give that next layer a stopping point so that it's not sitting right on top of the next one, but it also allows me to give the depth that I need and get all four sides trimmed up because you're going to be trimming those by hand. Does that make sense? Is everybody with me so far? And I'm still online. <laughs> You guys can hear me, right? You're a little confused, J Elaine? It's, it's probably clear as mud right now. And I get that because these are, these are a little tricky, but you're fixing to get where we're coming from. So I'm going to duplicate this because I have four layers till I have four of them. Okay, and you guys can watch this back and refer back. And if it chopped it up because we were having technical issues, I will go in and edit and try to put them all together in one. Because we're just learning to set up today, I am going to cover a little bit more of this in depth and do a separate video with the assembly. Uh, I just wanted to go into detail on how you can set up one of these. So. Once you have layer one, layer two, three, and four, because that's what I'm doing, I am going to go in and unhide my little group if I can find it. I think that's it. Let's unhide those. Here are my little pieces right here. And I am going to ungroup them. And I'm going to move one over and I'm just going to start with my back piece. Now, if you want to take a look at one of them and try to duplicate it, you can. We're kind of replicating this one here. Um, and you can see that the castle is in the back with that up at the top. And it has also, here's a little hint, guys. I don't know if they still have them in there, but some of them they will show you the panels. There we go. And you can look at those and kind of guess how they layered it up. You see those? So you can see about how deep you need to go with these and how shallow the others are. So it's really um, kind of easy to do this. So you're going to align that castle in the center horizontally and I want to bump it up till it's touching the top because I don't want it flopping freely. I am going to detach my little score lines. I'm not going to worry about them right now. I'm going to select move that to the front. There we go. Now I'm just going to select those two pieces and I'm going to weld. So now I have my castle and it's welded in there. And you can just keep a set of these and hide them, guys. You don't have to put them all on at one time. As long as you've got one set, you can go in and add those later. So we'll just hide a set and keep it. Now I'm going to get my shapes. I'm going to get a square. And I am going to bring that square right up to my castle right there. I'm going to bring it down till it covers that. I'm going to select the two and weld. So now it's connected. It didn't quite connect right there so I would probably in the real world undo it and shift it down just a hair more. But we're just going to leave it for now. And then I have these small trees in here. 
But if we look over there on theirs, they didn't use the whole tree. They used like pieces, just the sides. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get a duplicate and I am going to flip one so that it looks different on both sides. And now I'm going to see about where I want that to land in there. Did that not weld right? It didn't. Oops, oops, oops. Let's undo. Let me fix that. I don't want to confuse you guys. Didn't even notice it till now. Let me just... What? There we go. Bring that over just a little bit. Now select the two and weld. You want it. To, you want your sides to be solid. There we go. So now I'm going to duplicate my tree. I'm going to get a shape. I'm going to get a square, and I'm going to duplicate that. And I am going to flip one of my trees so that I get a little bit of difference on each side. I can even probably tilt that a little. If it depends on how much light you want coming through and you're just going to slice it where you feel comfortable. I'm just gonna get rid of that and get rid of that. Don't need it. Get rid of all that trash. We don't wanna move that. This one I'm bumping in. Select that and weld. Can you see this coming together now, guys? I actually want to flip this again. There we go. I want the other side of the tree this time. And you don't even need the trunk if you don't want it. Just get this piece. I'm just going to put that in there. Now I have my back piece. And at this point, I would unhide my little guides and attach them in. And my back piece would be finished. Okay. So now I want to move on to... The piece that's going to go in front of that and we're going to move that forward to the front all right send that to the back there we go so now I've got my next frame to go on top of that and in this one I think they did the gate next um, and you'd have to size this down and get it like you want it say that it should probably this is kind of like perspective drawing guys basically I'm just gonna bump those over I don't know how far up they went on theirs and they did the gate they went hmm, maybe their gate is right about the height of that so do this any way you want make it your own just going to go with mine right there I'm going to align the top and then I'm going to select my frame and I'm going to weld I'm not worried about those score lines I'll let them go I'll put them back later so now I have that in there and Let's see, need the street lamps. And you can decide where you want those. Where do I have it on the third one there? Maybe. But you're basically, let me arrange and move that backward. So I can grab those lambs. It doesn't want to cooperate. There we go. So 
I can get these lamps. I really like that one. Maybe between. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right there. And I'm going to adjust this one over. Once you have those where you want them, you'll want to, of course, align them. And then you're going to select your piece and you're going to weld it. So now we have this funny looking piece here. Uh, I believe Mickey and the other trees were in the other layer and love when the hearts was by itself. Nope, the trees go at the top of that one. So that's all we've got on this is just the fence. So that's pretty easy. Now all we have to do is bring in a square and get that at the height we need it. And I'm going to bring that right below. I want a little bead of light that can pop through on there. Can always go back and change it later and fill it in and weld. Now we have piece number two ready. Oops. So you can see now how those are starting to line up. Is everybody following along pretty easy? It's really just a lot of slicing and welding and finding your images. Once you have your frame set up, you're, you're pretty much there. So let's move that one to the front. And this one is not going to have anybody but Mickey and Minnie on it. Uh, oops, I want to move them to send that to the back. We want to be able to get them arranged, move to the front. There we go. So now I have, I'm going to just align all of these top so that I know where I'm placing everything. So everything's aligned. Top and left, or top and right, whatever you want. And then I'm going to say I want these two guys, and you may need to resize your images to get what you want. That's, that's looking pretty good. you got to remember, he's not going to be welded to that one at all. Now... Let me select that in my frame. Because there's nothing on the side of them, guys, you want to make sure that you keep them where they're supposed to be. And you can probably weld that. They're just going to be right there in the center. That way they won't move. And now you're going to bring your square in again. And you're going to unlock it. And weld. Now we have that layer. Are we getting there? Oh, thanks, Sue. Is everybody with me so far? I just figured if I kind of duplicated one that you guys could see here, you could follow the process a little bit easier. But you can do this with any of your own images. You don't have to follow these. You don't have to copy these guys. I just did this so that you guys could see how they went together without paying $15 for a file to do it. So totally make these your own. Just totally go for it. I mean, what have you got to lose but a little bit of design time? And I'm going to tell you, this needs to be cut out of watercolor paper, and it is not cheap. It's 140 pound, and I'll show you that, guys, in just a moment. But before you cut it out of that, 
cut it out of some of the cheap packs of paper, just plain white paper or color paper or craft paper, and make sure everything fits and aligns before you start cutting up your watercolor paper, okay? Because you'll, you'll need to check that. That's something that you, you're going to have to do. So I think I'm going to resize this just a little bit bigger. I want this to be right about there, I think. And I kind of want it to come up a little bit to give a little. That looks good. I kind of like that height. So I'm going to arrange and move that to the front. So I'm going to select my frame and select, let me arrange, move it backward one. There we go. And I am going to weld just those two so I have something to work with. I don't need these right now. Um, well, actually, I'm going to need my little Mickeys. I want them in there. Now you're going to get your hearts. Arrange, send it to the back. Arrange, send that to the back. So now I want the little hearts here. And we're going to connect them up. That's what they, I think they just did some up the side. I don't know if they did that side or not. Let's see. Yeah, they put a few on that side too. So you're just going to throw some hearts in there, whatever you want. Resize them. So let's just duplicate a few. And can make that one that size. And how about we just flip that one and then bring this one in here. I don't think it needs any more than that. Not for the tutorial anyway. I'm just going to pop a couple over on this side. Let's flip one. Okay, so let me, don't want to move that one. Just going to select my hearts. And the word love, and I'm going to weld that. And then I'm going to actually move this piece out of my way and bring this back over. That's about where I had it. And I'm going to weld that. So then we have that piece in there ready to go, but we need our trees at the top. So we're going to have to place everything back together so we can see where to put the trees at the top. So we're just going to align and center. And I'm going to duplicate that. We need a square. You know what? That looks pretty good. Might have to turn it a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to range front. Don't want to go past my let me unlock it and stretch it. There we go. Okay, let's get it. It's kind this is this is the tricky part. You have to see where it's going to land up there at the top. You may have to shrink it some. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with it right there for right now. I'm going to slice it. You may have to slice them a couple of times. I'm just going to keep that piece. There we 
There we go. You want it to be inside your frame when you weld it, guys. And I think I'm just going to contour this. I'm going to take out that piece at the bottom. And I'm going to use the other side of the tree up here and just make it a little bit bigger. And don't, it's okay if it hangs over parts of the castle. You got to remember this is going to be your front piece and it's going to be, be in front of it. There's going to be a space behind it. Okay. So now I need this piece and this piece and I am just going to weld them. And then I want to make sure that I have the right front piece at the front. And I do. There we go. Going to select those two and my top piece and weld. And guys, that's ready to go in a shadow box. Now, if you wanted, I would probably, because this is an 11 by 14, this is what I said about there's going to be a space here okay so you can do a decorative border you can do anything that you want to come up here on this piece to fill in this bottom um let's go with here. you don't have to put anything there you can let that hang freely whatever whatever you whatever you desire whatever you want um That looks pretty cool. And so does that. I'm going to go with this one because it's a little more solid. Let's see if it'll work. Mm. Gets up into the Mickey head. But we can fix that. And shape. Give me a heart. Slice that. Oops, I didn't get enough of it. I don't think that we're going to do it again. We get a heart and, I don't know, circle. I didn't slice quite enough. There we go. In the real world, I would make it a little bit more perfect than that, but. I would clean this up. A lot better in the real world guys I'm just kind of showing you what you can do it just takes a little bit of time why doesn't it want to give me my heart there it is duplicate I hit delete. Undo, undo. There we go. On my keyboard instead of shift. And slice. I don't even need that much of it. I'm just trying to clean up. Those edges. Oh, 
And all I did there, guys, was just contour and duplicate it and contour out the other side. And that's not perfect, but it's close. I'm going to unlock it. I would actually slice this piece as well instead of squishing it up like that. But you can, I'm just kind of showing you guys what you can, what you can do and what you can come up with. And there you go. You're confused with my score lines. The score lines, what they're going to do, Elaine, is just mark this and I will show that in the assembly. We just want even marks so that if we have to trim this off so that when we place our layers together, we're placing them evenly because you don't want one layer going in and you trimmed off a quarter inch here and an eighth inch here and it not sitting right inside the box because it wouldn't sit correctly. And that's what the score lines are for. They're not for anything else. You're going to fold them over and that's going to give you your spaces between each layer. That's all they're going to do. Because nothing's going to be seen in there. This isn't going to be seen at all. And if you don't want those, you can not put them on there at all. And you can use foam dots or whatever you want to use to space out your layers. Because this, this is going in a box, in a shadow box. Into different pieces. To give it depth. So that when, when you put it together, you're going to see those layers like this. You see you don't see those on the edge? And that's what it is. They just space them out inside the box. Now, if you're going to put lights, this is my theory, guys, and you can do this any way you want. Personally, I would make, get a small circle. The top side is not going to matter as much, um, but you could do them at the top and at the bottom. But I would get me like a tenth of an inch hole, and I would slice them out in strategic places along the bottom and the top so that I could run the lights underneath so that it wouldn't hump up or, or make my panels curve because if you're trying to fit it over a piece of wire then you, it's going to it needs a passageway so you would just slice out little pieces and you could notch this with your scissors later where you needed them if you wanted to or you can slice them ahead of time and let your Cricut cut so that you had your little mouse doors for your wire lights to run under Okay, so you want to do that along the top and along the bottom. That being said, if you're going to do it, you need these lights. Okay, um, these are the Ashlands. I think they're four or five bucks at Michael's. Like three batteries, I believe is what they take. I always hand these to my husband and let him do that. So I don't even know how to open them. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, there it is. If I can get them open. So I never always have problems with my nails. Ah, uh, where's my tool? open. There it goes. I think. Maybe. So you put your batteries in and then you'll be able to turn it on. But the lights are very small. Okay. Just teeny tiny lights. And you're just going to be running this wire myself. If I were to do this, I would put my battery pack on here with some hot glue 
and I would actually drill a hole into this backing um, for me to fish my lights through. That way this will always be stuck to the back. They can get to the batteries and you have an on and off switch. Okay, but you can do that any way you want. But you will need some lights to light it up with and those are the smallest ones you're probably going to find. And the paper that you're going to need, if you're doing 11 by 14, of course you're going to need the paper that fits it. This is the Canson 140 pound watercolor paper in a 12 by 18 sheet. Um, now if you're doing 9 by 9, you could probably get by with the um, 12 by 11 or 12 by 15, whatever it is. Uh, they are called rice lights in some places, uh, Pat. Um, if you go to Michael's, you know how they put in all those little bins there around at the checkout, all those little $2, $4, $3 items, the little stamps, the washi tapes and all that where you go to check out. That's where they keep these. And they have them, I think, on the end caps over by the candles. Um, but they're like, I don't know, they're 36 inch, the 18 warm LED lights, string lights is what they're calling them. Um, these will go six hours on, 18 off, they're water resistant. So, I mean, it's not a bad deal for under five bucks because most of the time your rice lights and all that, they're nine, 10, $15 a string. And the ones from the Dollar Tree, the lights are going to be just big uh, for this type project. That's what these are, Brenda. The, the rice lights are, these are flat. You can see that's what these are right here. That's one of the lights right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. That's a light. But it's flat. It's not much bigger than the wire. It looks like a, it looks like a thing of hot glue on there. On the wire. Yes, these are available year round, Pat. I bought these today. I have some more, um, and this is what I generally use for my projects. Um, I have on occasion uh, used the Dollar Tree lights. Just depends on what I'm I'm using them for. Uh, but for my nice projects and, and stuff like that that are going to be used or be around for a while, I use these. But these are, these are back in, because these are used for all sorts of crafts. Michaels carries these all the time. Um, they're called Ashland LED String Lights. You might be able to buy them online. Uh, it's not going to let me put my Michaels link in there. Um, but I'll, I'll post in the group or down below in the video so that you guys have those. But basically, you're going to need that and your watercolor. I am going to uh, get mine together. If you guys want, I will record it and put an assembly video together or I will go live again. Let's see. Wednesday, if that works for you guys, I will go live Wednesday and we will put this together. Because I don't want to turn this into a three or four hour video and I do need to cut that to make sure it's going to fit my frame and some test paper before I cut it um, on the watercolor. But then I can show you guys how to assemble and if we need to change anything. What exactly is watercolor paper? Watercolor paper is used by artists who paint with watercolor paints. This paper can get wet, it will take the dampness, and it won't soak all the way through, Elaine. Um, so they use it for a number of purposes, for drawings and stuff like that. But it's thick and heavy. It's 140 pound, so it's almost like double that of Cricut paper. But it's very stiff and very uh, heavy. Uh, 
yes, you could probably find them at Hobby Lobby as well, Pat. I don't know if they're going to be that inexpensive. Um, but you can order online at Michael's. So if you order online and have them shipped to you, you know you'll get the right ones. And I'll give you that link. I, I, as a matter of fact, I will go in and see if they're available online. And if they are, I'll, I'll shoot you that link. But you can get, the, guys, uh, just a hint, this at Michael's, this pack right here, is like 20 bucks. But you can get this at Walmart. I think it is for around 10 or 12 bucks. So if you don't have a um, coupon at Michael's to get 40% off on this, I definitely suggest getting it at Walmart. They carry it. They carry it in these sizes. Um, this is 12 by 18. It comes in, I think, 12 by 15 or 11 by 15, something like that. Uh, but make sure that you get a size that you're going to need. And you're going to need a 12 by 24 mat to cut these on, guys. So if you don't have mats, go to Cricut and get you some mats so that you can cut the larger ones. Or, again, you can set up your own file for the 9 by 9s. Could craft board be used? Craft board probably could be used, Pat, but there are going to be so many. When you're looking at your file, um, it's, I, I would say you could use the craft board. It, it's going to be size restricted, so you wouldn't be able to do an 11 by 14, but you could do a 9 by 9 out of the craft board. Um... So, I'm going to say yes. Poster board, I don't think it's quite thick enough, Sue, to give you those dimensions. Because you. this is the thing, when you put those lights in there and you type, have a good night, Debbie. When you uh, put those lights in there, you got to remember that on the back and running up the sides on some of those, and you may have to tape your wire in place to get the lights to stay where you want them to. On those thinner things like poster board, that might show through. So be mindful of that. Your watercolor paper is thick. The watercolor is 140 pounds. It's not 90 pounds. It's 140. I don't. I. I don't think I've ever seen a watercolor under that. Have you, Jamie? Because it has to be thick so that the water doesn't soak through when they're painting on it. It's a 300 gram, 140 pound. But so yeah, um, poster board or something, if, if the, you're mocking up or you're just trying to figure out and, and get your layers together and stuff like that, that would work great for a mock-up. Yes, they are all white layered images. And as far, and I haven't tested yet, guys, on these lights. Um, I don't know if we can color them with like Copic markers or alcohol inks and get some color in them. But you can buy them in colors on Amazon, the rice lights with different colors. So you see some of them on um, Etsy and stuff where they've used the colored lights. Um, and i mean like they use the blue here but guys this is just like maybe three frames and maybe four uh five they've got five frames in this and this is the way they did their lights there's our plug-in so they ran them in that corner but it looks like they did drill a hole um but they have five frames on this one but if you go in here on Etsy and look guys most of them are giving you the panels all you have to do is recreate them so and if you don't want to do that of course you can purchase them and have them ready to go but I thought you guys might want to know how to design your own to get there in case you saw something that you want to do but you didn't like their file then you can create your own
Yeah, I thought so, Jamie. I, I thought so because they're alcohol. And it should should give you just enough color without making it so bright, just a muted color. It would be pretty. You could probably do two or three colors in there, whereas when you buy those strings that are colored, it's going to be all one color. Yay, Elaine! Okay, guys, does anybody have any other questions? I will go live again Wednesday at 7 p.m. and we will assemble one of these. I am going to test cut it and make sure that everything works. And if it works and everything goes like it's supposed to, I will put, a, before I post the uh, live, I will put on there if there was a file adjustment or not. So any of you guys that want this file, let me just save it. Oh, I can't do that because it's uploaded. You have to go in and do your own. I may, um, I might be able to go in and screenshot these and turn them into an SVG. I will try my best. Once I make sure it fits, I will make an SVG out of these and shoot it to you guys. How about that? I will replace the other SVG with one that works. So you'll go to the same place where the free SVG was, where you got that file to upload and, and play with. And then if this one fits and everything works, I will post the SVG to that same spot. So that when you open it up, it's not in pieces, but it looks like this. Yay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you guys um, Wednesday, 7 p.m. And we'll do an assembly.